This is method two. Okay, very important. You can only divide what x minus a factors. Do you have a question? Um, what was your answer to the last one? Uh, it's a little hard to learn at first, but it's not that bad. First of all, x plus two. If the uh, divi divisor is x plus two, then if you solve it, x is equal to what? Negative two. All right, so here's what you do. You draw a little half of a box, and you put negative two inside. And then you take this polynomial you're dividing. And what you want to do is take just the coefficient, and you go in order. The highest is x cubed. What's the coefficient in front of x cubed? One. One. What, uh, and then go down, x squared. What's the co uh, coefficient in front of x squared? Negative 14. Negative 14. What is the coefficient in front of x? Zero. zero. There's no x, so it's just zero. And then the last is constant, minus 54. OK, next. You draw a line like this. That means equal sign. And then you draw a line in between the last two digits. That means after this line is a remainder. OK, here's how you do So again, you, yeah. Because x plus 2 equals 0, x is equal to minus 2. OK. The first step to synthetic division is you drop this first number straight down. Then you take that number, 1, times what's in the box. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Then you put negative 2 here. And then you're going to add. Not subtract, you're going to add. Negative 14 minus 2 is negative 16. Do it again. Negative 16 times negative 2 is 32. Put 32 here. Add. 30, yeah. Uh, second one, which one? Add, add straight down. Okay, 32 times negative 2 is negative 64. Negative 64. Add negative 118. Okay, this is remainder. This is constant x, x squared. So this means x squared minus 16x plus 32. That's what the numbers mean, with a remainder of negative 118. So this is quotient. Negative 118 is remainder. <coughs> So this is how it works. This position is remainder. This is constant x, x squared. So it keeps going up in power. Yeah. So like, um, when you draw the line between 32 and negative yeah. 16, yeah. do you always draw the line between the last two? Yes, correct. Yes. All right. Let's just set the next one up. What goes in the box? Two. My, co my coefficients go one, negative four, six, negative four. Draw a line to mean the equal sign. Line in between means after this line is a remainder. What do I do first? Drop down the one. Okay, so always just drop down the one. And then just kind of multiply, put it there, add, multiply, put it there, add. And then you're done. So the last, the last one before the remainder is always the constant. Correct. Okay. All right. We'll do more practice on Friday. All right. So once you did the long division and synthetic division, no matter which method you do, you should get the same answer. Um, your quotient should be x cubed minus x squared plus 1. Okay. The question says, write your answer as a product of two factors. Product means multiply, right? This is one factor. The quotient is one factor. The other factor is the divisor. So this is the answer.
Okay, if you only have the quotient, you got half of it right. Make sure you read the direction. Good? Yeah. Oh, I'm into the synthetic division. I got a totally different answer. You got a totally different answer. Okay, so maybe you um, subtract it instead of uh, add it. Let's see. Okay, drop down the one, multiply together, put it here, negative one, multiply together, put it here, that's a zero, multiply together, put it here, one, put it, uh, multiply together, put it here, uh, zero. So that's gonna be um, x cubed minus x squared plus one. Do you know what you did wrong? Uh, I thought you were supposed to multiply the outside number, the one, on the left by uh, all numbers on the top. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, the bottom one. Once you add it together, the the after the equal sign, all the, that's the number you multiply to the box. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All right. Let's check homework. All right. We are on lesson five five. <coughs> all right. So. So far, we learned um, some techniques on factoring. So we have linear, quadratic, cubic, and then some uh, fourth degree or even higher. And the methods we learned were like normal factoring, like quadratic. We learned uh, grouping, if you can actually pull something out and it kind of is the same. We learned difference of cubes, <laughs> sum of cubes. We learned substitution. What if you still cannot factor? Like it's just something and you try all that and then you just cannot factor. <coughs> okay, so then I'm gonna teach you this one new method. It is very long, but it works uh, sometimes. <laughs> Not guaranteed. Um, okay, so if you see this really long polynomial and you're just like, I cannot factor it, uh, you can guess. <laughs> so this is a method to tell you which ones are Good guesses. How do you guess uh, this last number, a0? a0 or a0, uh, that is the constant part of the polynomial. Okay, so let's kind of put a note on here. This is the constant. This we're going to call p. So we're in section 5.5. Five. Okay, so the last number of the polynomial, which is the constant part, it is p. And then in our polynomial, the leading coefficient Okay, the leading coefficient we're going to call q. So just remind yourself we're always taking the leading coefficient and the constant, the constant, not the last one you see, because sometimes it's not actually just a number. You have to pick the constant. All right, so this is called, uh, okay, so this method is called the rational roots theorem. The rational roots theorem. What does rational mean, rational number? Uh, it is a kind of real number. A specific one, though. <laughs> what kind of, yeah? Ratio. Yes, ratio. So this theorem helps you find possible uh, fractional roots. Okay, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so we found P, o, P and Q. What we're going to do is uh, find the factors of them. So. P is, we said, is A0 or A0, uh, plus minus P, basically all the integer factors of A0. Okay, and then for the leading coefficient, we're looking for Q, but also the plus minus uh, factors of Q. The possible factors are plus minus p over q. 
Okay, it is very confusing right now, so I am going to show you an example. Let's look at this example. Find the possible rational roots of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3. Possible rational roots. What number is p? 3. 3. What number is q? 1. 1. The number, the leading coefficient. All right, so we're going to find plus minus p, plus minus q, and then plus minus p over q. What are the factors of p? So what numbers you multiply together, you will you get p? Hmm? One, and three. one and three only, right? So plus minus p is plus minus one and plus minus three. Three times one. P, P is three. We're looking for numbers that multiply together to get three. So one and three. Okay, Q. Q is one. Why are the numbers that multiply together to get one? Just one. All right. Okay, so here's how you get P. Here's how you get Q. P over Q. P over Q, you're looking for all the combinations P uh, can be divided by Q. So P over Q, when P is plus minus 1, Q can be plus minus 1. So P over Q is going to be plus minus 1. Yes? No. Okay, P is, when P is 1, Q is 1, plus minus P over Q means to divide P and Q is just 1 over 1. So 1. Uh, because the theorem says we're looking for the plus minus version of the factors. No, three times one. The, the factors, the two numbers multiply together. Um, okay, and then the next one, p over q, is three over one. So it's just three. So what does this theorem say? The theorem means that plus minus one, so one, negative one, three, negative three. Four of them are possible rational roots, so possible roots of the function. Okay, so for example, if you look at this right now, you ask yourself, of everything I know how to do, can I factor that one? x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3, can you factor that one? Yeah. yeah? No, there's nothing you can do to factor that one because you, it's not quadratic, <coughs> it cannot be grouped, it's not different sets of cubes, sum of cubes, you can't substitute, there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do. But it's factorable. So the question is how do I start? You start by guessing. But you don't want to just guess any number in the world. You can guess you know, two or six or something and none of them will work. So someone came up with this <coughs> idea that the numbers that you should guess are these rational roots. So start guessing from these four numbers. Okay, one of them may work, none of them may work, but at least it's a good place to start. Yes? Okay, all right, let's try another one and uh, let's just practice finding the P over Qs for now. Okay, if you look at this polynomial, first you ask yourself, can I factor this? Everything you know how to do. Can I group? Yes, but if I take out x squared here, I get 2x minus 1, and I have a 2x plus 5. They're not the same. I cannot group. You can only group if those numbers, uh, factors repeat. So I cannot group. Uh, anything else you guys know how to do to solve this? Yeah, there's nothing we can do. So we, get, we have to start with P over Q. What number is P? Five. Five. What number is Q? Two. 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 Please don't take the X with it, just the number. So what are the possible factors of plus minus P? One and five. 
1 and 5. There are only two numbers that multiply together to get 5. Okay, Q. What are the numbers that multiply together to get Q? 1 and 2. One and two. All right, now we want P over Q. So all the possible combinations of P divided by Q. So I try to do this uh, systematically so I don't lose one. So I start with P, and then I just do like a tree. Okay, so 1 over 1, 1 over 2. And then I go on to the next P. 5 over 1, 5 over 2. Okay, we, we're taking P divided by Q. P divided by Q. So start with P, go to the first Q, go to the second Q. Start with the second P, go to the first Q, go to the second Q. Okay, again. Start with the first P, divide by the first Q. One over one is just one. Start with the first P, go to the second Q. So plus minus one half. Start with the first P, which is five, Go to the first Q, which is 1, so 5. And then go to the first P, and sorry, second P, and then the second Q. How many possible rational roots are there? What? No. Much higher than that. 8. Plus minus of each one. Okay, so there are po eight possible roots, but maybe one works, maybe two works, maybe three works, uh, or maybe none of them work. That would be a bad day uh, if none of them work. <laughs> okay, let's have you practice. You kind of get the hard one. Huh? How do you know? Uh, we're going to check. That's why your homework takes so long. You got to check all eight. <laughs> Bye. Synthetic division. No. You're looking for remainder of zero to see if it's, yeah, that's why you got to write all of them down, all eight. Oh, maybe one works, maybe two works, maybe three works. I have no idea. You're going to have to <laughs> divide it all. Yeah, so that's why I only give you four homework uh, problems. It's not, enough space. <laughs> not enough space. I'm going to tell you how to do it um, uh, smarter so you're not checking all eight. Okay, anyways. All right, let's, uh, let's look at P over Q again. I'm going to help you get started. OK. Uh, OK, let me call on somebody. Uh, junior, what number is P? Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. One and two. Uh, your, uh, P is two, but yes, you're right. The factors are one and two. Okay, uh, hmm, let's see. Uh, Sherry, what number is Q? 15, good. So now we're looking for factors of 15, numbers that multiply together to get 15. 5 and 3, and 1 and 15. Okay, so 1, 3, 5, 15. Okay, the combo is a lot, right? Every one of P goes with four Qs. All right. OK, so go ahead and uh, find P over Q and reduce, if possible, because sometimes they do repeat. Iris, give me one. Plus minus two. Sally, give me another one. One over 15. Uh, Tiffany, give me another one. Plus minus one. Okay, Aaron, give me another one. Two over five. Yes. Okay, Junior, give me another one. Two over fifteen. Okay, Nicole, give me another one. Two over three. Okay, Tom, give me another one. Two or five is up, up there. Two? Two is up there. Um, three. three. Three is not of. One, one over three. 
Okay, Mark, do you think you can find the last one <laughs> that we haven't done? Wow. One over five? Okay, so we have a total of how many possible rational roots? Eight, 16. Eight, okay, there are eight there, but there's plus minus version, so there's 16. All right, so obviously you don't want to check all 16 and realize, oh, only one of them worked. That would be a horrible day. So there is a faster way of checking. Okay, it's called the remainder theorem. The remainder th theorem says if your polynomial is divisible by x minus k, then when you plug in x equals k, you will have the remainder. Okay, if you take a polynomial divided by x minus k, then x, if you put x equals k into the function, the answer is the remainder. Okay, what does that mean? <coughs> huh? Well, let's take a look at an example. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, this example. What is plus minus p? 3n, 1. Okay, what is plus minus q? Huh? 1. Okay, so what is plus minus p over q? 1 and 3. Okay, so we have uh, four of them that we can check. Now we're going to use the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says if you plug that number into the function, then you should get a number that is the remainder. Okay, so for example, we have four numbers to check. Mm, I am going to start checking number 1. So that means I'm going to put 1 into the function. Okay, my function is this equation here the equation x q minus 2 x squared plus 3 is my function I'm gonna put 1 inside okay so 1 cubed minus 2 times 1 squared plus 3 1 minus 2 plus 3 what is that 2 2 is my remainder. So it's a very fast way to check the remainder. The question is, is 1 a root of the function? OK, talk to your partner. Is 1 a root of the function if I get 2 as a remainder? So talk to your partner. Uh, <laughs> mm. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Let's kind of go back to vocab again. Root zero. So a lot of you asked me on that uh, quiz. Root zero, x-intercept. We talked about this already, right? What's the, what's the definition of root zero and intercept, x-intercept? When y equals 0. Wait, so all of those make y equals 0. So f of 1 means if 1 is a root. If 1 is a root, then it makes the function what? Zero. Uh, right. If one, if 1 is a root, then it makes the function 0. But right now, it makes the function 2, which means it's a remainder. So is 1 a root? No. No, good. So basically, you cannot get remainders. Okay, if you, are, you want to find the root, then you cannot get a remainder. Okay, so one is a no. All right, we have three more numbers to check. Which one do you guys want to do next? Negative, negative one? Okay. All right, so negative one cubed minus two times negative one squared plus three. Negative one cubed is negative one. Negative <coughs> one squared times negative two is uh, minus two <laughs> plus three. Minus 1 minus 2 plus 3 is what? Zero. Zero. Yes, we found it. Now what? <laughs> okay, so they want us to uh, solve all of them. So they want us to check the other two as well. But I'm going to tell you a, a fast way not to do that. <laughs> okay, so we know that negative 1 is a root. 
Um, there are some other numbers that may not be roots or may be roots. So what we're going to do is long division. So we found one. Once you find one, you're uh, uh, not long division, synthetic division. Uh, once you find one, here's what you do. You put negative one in the synthetic division and you, oh, <laughs> is it that bad? Uh, synthetic division is very fast. Okay, one, negative two, zero, three. And basically, once you find one, you divide it up. And then look at the leftover and see if you can factor more. Okay, drop down one, multiply together, negative one. Add it together, multiply together, gets three. Add it together, multiply, negative three, zero. What if you don't get zero? No, you did it wrong. Because you already said the remainder is zero. <laughs> if you do it with synthetic division, you should still get zero. If you don't get zero, then you did something wrong. Does that make sense? You're using two different methods to say the same thing. You should get the same number. Yeah, no? Okay. All right, so you get um, here, this means x squared minus 3x plus 3. Can you factor this? Two numbers that multiply together to get 3, when you add them, you get negative 3. No. no. All right, it's not factorable. You're done. So negative 1 is the only rational root. Okay, so the theorem says, check these four roots. They are all possible rational roots. Mm, okay, so we can put all of them in the equation and check to see which one's going to be zero. Um, or we can stop once we find one. Once we find one, we put it in a synthetic division, divide it out. Okay, and you get this polynomial. And then you say, can I factor more? If I can factor more, then I'm, I need to find more roots. If I cannot factor more, then I'm done. But uh, even for the one, instead of negative one, can I just put one? Huh? Yeah, I did. The remainder is two. I don't want a remainder. I want a remainder of zero, because I'm trying to figure out which one is the root. So first we have to find the remainder of zero, and then we can do something. Yeah, correct. Yes. So if you can simplify, is the root wrong? If you can simplify? Yeah, if you can simplify. Oh, you mean you can factor more? Yeah. No, it's, it's not wrong. It's just saying there's more. You remember, I only checked two of them. I didn't check three and negative three. Maybe they are roots. Maybe they're not roots. Uh, I'm making this really confusing. One of them eight Okay, all right. Here is the logic. So you have this polynomial. So let's say that you have a plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three. According to the theorem, you're supposed to check all six and figure out which ones work, which ones don't work. And you could do that. Just plug everything in and just brute force uh, check all six. See which one is zero. Um, I'm saying that it's not the fastest way, but if you want to do it that way, you can. Does that kind of make sense? You, you can put f of one, f of negative one, f of two, f of negative two, f of three, um, f of negative three. And you're just checking to see which one's gonna give you zero. Okay, and then the ones that say this is zero, this is zero, then you're good. And then you, you, you finish your homework. Yeah, eventually you have to do it my way. But for, for now, you can do it this way. No, but then, um. then you had a very unlucky day. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you only found one. Like, how do you know that there is only one and not two? Because if it, there are other two, then you should have been able to factor. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. And then I think it will... Hmm. Okay, according to the theorem, if there are oh. rational roots, it has to be one of these, or two, or three. 
okay? If you divide one L and then you have this uh, thing that you cannot factor, what does it mean when you cannot factor? Uh, mm, not, uh, okay. Hmm. This might be very confusing. Okay, so your roots, there are some um, possibilities. You have rational roots, which is what we're doing. Rational roots, rational numbers means what again? Ratio, ratio so <laughs> fraction. So these finds the fraction roots. What other possible roots are there? If it's not rational, then it is irrational. irrational. What's irrational? No, it keeps on going. Give me an example of irrational. Pi, pi. pi okay, uh, a number that can actually show up in the, <laughs> in the answer. Square root 2, or negative square root 2. Okay, what other numbers can there be besides rational and irrational? Yes, complex numbers. One plus two i. Okay, so this theorem will only find the rational ones. If you cannot factor it, it's either irrational or complex. Got it? Okay, so for example, this one I couldn't factor, right? If I use quadratic formula on that, I either will get a ra irrational, so square root two, square root three, one minus square root five, something weird or I get something with an I, but not three, not negative three. Yeah? So if you can't factor it, for example, if you can't factor it, and, well, for example, you factor it as x times two multiplied by x plus three. Yeah. So two and negative three would be able to, like, they would be in the number Correct, one. yes. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Right, because there's no more rational roots. There's only irrational or complex. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. Find the rational roots. Okay, what is plus minus P? What are all the possible factors? Hmm? Plus minus six. Plus minus, six. Plus minus, six. Plus minus one. Plus yeah. Yeah. Yes, good. Okay, what is the possible? Uh, yeah. So, two is done better of the sign before the six. The sign, oh, correct. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer has a good question. This six has a negative in front of it. So, her question is does it matter what the sign is in front of it? No, you always have plus minus versions, regardless of the sign. Um, okay, what is the plus minus q? Plus minus one. Okay, so plus minus P over Q is gonna be, one, two. <clears throat> yeah, it's just those four again, right? One, two, three, and six. Okay, I'm gonna have you work with your partners. Partner, sorry. You have eight of them. You guys come up with a good way to figure out which ones work, which ones don't. So whether you wanna split up the work, each person check four, or you have a better way of doing it, um, go ahead and figure out which one is or is not the root. All right, which ones are the rational roots? Hmm? Three? Minus one? One more. Not minus two, so close. <coughs> two. Okay, so these three are the only rational roots out of the eight. The other ones don't work. Oh, negative two, sorry, negative two. Uh, I wrote this wrong, sorry. All right, let's try another one. So now you guys get the drill, right? Uh, so go ahead and try the second one. This one, the Q is not nice. So P over Q is a little bit long. Yeah. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to tell you the answer. It is 3 over 2, negative 1, and 2. 
So for, uh, for homework, it's basically this. You have four problems. Whichever way you want to do it, but um, you got to check and tell me which ones are the rational leaps.